this is Jean here, Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You. I'm coming to you from my sheltered in place home. Uh, this is about day 18, 19 of our staying indoors of, uh, for the COVID-19 pandemic that is wreaking havoc around the world. Um, it is so terrible what is happening, the numbers going up every day. And it's getting, in our minds, very, very, very serious. Very, very serious. Um, Ian had to go out just once uh, last, or a few days ago in an emergency. Uh, he was very, very um, apprehensive. We have been at home. And it's a terrible situation. I was looking at the news, not to be bear, bearers of bad news. I'm doing a tutorial, actually, and it's going to be fun and happy. But right now... Um, just to address this, uh, millions are unemployed. Um, my husband has no work, uh, but is sort of working from home because they're in the my entire family, as you know, is in the construction or the insurance business. Um, there have been emergencies for my son, uh, who's a public adjuster. There have been fires and there have been trees down. So that is deemed a life-sustaining uh, uh, way that he can go to on that on those jobs. But construction, the industry is pretty much shut down. We are taking one day at a time. We tend to be very optimistic people. Um, we like to see the glass half full. And this too shall pass. We are living in critical times, as I've said, hard to deal with, as the Bible says. Um, and it's not for the faint of heart. Um, we just literally take one day at a time, 24 hours. And what will be, will be. There's no use stressing about it. A friend of ours, actually Jen's husband, my friend Jen, her husband, sent us a beautiful article on stress and how stress is a killer. Stress itself is a killer. During this time, my husband and I and Maxwell were trying to, uh, we had a conversation about what have we lost and what have we gained through this experience because the three of us are at home. We are just here. I mean, we have a lovely home, a, a fairly large home. We are blessed to have each other. There are those folks out there who have no one. And our hearts and our prayers are going out. We have several friends who are sheltered in place at home and they are alone in a small apartment. Oh my word. So we're trying our best to reach out, to FaceTime, to call, to send text messages, um, to keep these ones in our thoughts and prayers because we're okay. Um, I joke, I've always joked about it, like I have a hobby. I have a hobby. I have a tremendous hobby, and I love being at home. Um, uh, again, if you know anything about our family, we've lived in three different countries. We've had ten children. We had six children in one country. We moved to another country. We moved when I was pregnant. We've had a large life, so, and we've done a lot. We've done a lot. We've traveled a lot. Not recently, and I'm okay with that. As we've gotten older, I'm a homebody. So I'm quite okay. 18 days, and I haven't gone out. And, and I'm thinking, what have I lost? I said to my husband, what have we lost? Um, my husband immediately said, being with family, obviously. We've Skyped, we've Zoomed, we've FaceTimed, uh, Google Duoed. Uh, keeping in touch with all of our children. Um, what has he gained? And it was so sweet because he works hard. My husband is not a workaholic. I, me I mean, to he's not obsessed. He wants to be here, um, but he's just a hard worker. Because every time, I, every time I do a video, Ian's working. And I'm like, I have another job for him. He loves to work. My husband is uh, 72 years old, and he says, if I sit down, I'll rust. And I thought, wow. He, he goes, 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 and he's very fit. But I, he said, what have I gained? He said, I've been with my family. Um, Maxwell, as you know, is autistic. Maxwell is 20. He'll be 21 in October. And I asked Maxwell not too long ago, how old actually uh, did he feel? And because my husband and I said the same thing, totally separate. So I asked Maxwell, because why I asked that question of uh, Maxwell, who's autistic, um, is he's desperate to drive. As you know, if you look back, he has a driving rig. He won't be able to drive because he also has epilepsy. I said, Maxwell, how old do you think you are? Because he's acting like a teenage boy that's desperate to drive that can't. And he said, very astutely, very uh, 
in he has so much perception of so much um thought our our maxwell and he says i feel 14. my husband and i said the exact same thing maxwell's about 14 in so many ways in other ways he's beyond has wisdom beyond his years what a treasure to be here with this dear boy this dear young man alone i have lost i have lost the yearning to shop i am i am a shopaholic i love to shop i like things i as you know i like stuff i like things and i've shopped um and i've lost that desire and it's not a bad thing it really isn't a bad thing i'm home i have enough things and when i did my downsizing move everybody was like so many people were like you just have so much stuff and so much junk and get rid of it and you'll feel lighter and blah blah, blah all of that and i i have i have i've gotten rid of about three quarters of our belongings in the rest of our home not my sewing room obviously um do i feel lighter at this point i don't i miss my things sorry you minimalists i miss my things did they define me no of course not but i like things i had a minimalistic mother i think i've told you folks and i've had minimalistic brothers and a few of our children are minimalistic i'm not that way more is never enough but this whole experience has taught me that isn't important obviously i always knew that we had 10 children we had to put our children first obviously family and people and relationships are more important but i miss my things but i don't miss shopping and i think Ian was saying, well, it's because there's a killer out there. And that is so true. I don't want to go outside. What have I gained being out in our lovely acreage here, being outside? I was, I was outside going to the shops, you know, doing shopping for my large family my whole life. I'd be out. We go out in the ministry work. We go out to our meetings. I'm outside, but I haven't been only to be outside in nature. We went for a walk in our woods the other day. Um, we were exploring some downed trees. It was just so lovely. I've gained that appreciation. Uh, no people around, but uh, nature. Um, and, and what our God has given us. I have, I've gained that. Maxwell, unfortunately, when we asked him, his computer broke. <laughs> Just at the time, he, did, he, he resurrected an old Xbox. Um, he's on his rig, but his computer that he actually built with the help of his MBIT teacher, um, a technical school teacher, helped him build that several years ago. He was so proud of himself. Again, he was so clever. He built, he built my computer my husband's computer and his own computer and something with the motherboard went so he's like i lost my computer so he was thinking in uh materialistic terms but that was very important to him so we're trying to sort that out for our dear maxwell anyway um i'm waffling but i'm thinking you people who tune in to me again i've said it um don't mind me chatting away um and it's for me it's 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 a lovely release I talk to my family, I have a large family, but it's so nice to, to share um, with people all over the world. We do have friends all over the world. Our friend from Sweden, from England, from South Africa, where we have been, um, and we have friends there. They're getting in touch with us. Um, again, technology is a wonderful thing. So that's my little spiel for today, but I also have to, I also, I need credit. I need credit. I went up on my ladder because I thought I'm not making something huge. Um, but I went up on my ladder to get something blue. You know, I hate blue. No, I don't hate blue. I don't hate blue. But I wanted to make something blue. So I've made a tutorial on a French, like a, it's called a braid, like a French braid. Just this a small table runner. Because I believe it was Michelle made a comment. Could I do a tutorial on a table on a French braid on a braided runner but making it into a quilt she has not seen videos to that you've seen a video making this but not how to make it into a quilt um right after this I'm, I've only made two of these and I made them into a quilt I made several of the runners and then put them together with sashing um 
I don't, I'm not doing that now. I just made a table runner. But hopefully at the end of my tutorial here, however long it is, and it's probably going to be long, um, I've, I've figured out, I've, I've told you how to sort of add a corner triangle and sashing to put your quilt together, to put your runners together. I, I, I've, I'll put up a picture. Uh, many years ago, I made a braided runner with a panel. I've taken four runners, squared them off, and, it, and, and put them top, bottom, and sides around a panel, uh, a pre-printed panel, and I'll put a picture up. That was like an, an Asian flavor. Very, very pretty. So I went up on my ladder for you people. I pulled up my blue, and this is using a quarter of a jelly roll, this. So as I was saying in the beginning, as I said in my tutorial, one jelly roll will make four of this runner, which measures about 14 by 52, something like that, without, without the centerpiece. You need, you need a square for the center and the binding. And of course, the oh, look at my backing. I used a stripe, which I show you. Um, this, this had pretty, this, this backing had pretty teacups on it. Oh, so pretty. Um, but this is made one jelly roll that has 40 two and a half inch strips could make four of this runner. Actually, um, I use seven. There is 10 patterns, four strips each. I only use seven. So this could have been made much longer with one jelly roll, four of them. Four of these could be made with one jelly roll. So I explained that to you in my tutorial to follow. Oh, and, I, and, and so that's that. I went up on my ladder and I pulled blue and yellow, and it's lovely. I think I'm going to send this to one of my friends, actually, because I'm not a blue person, um, but everybody's like, make something blue. So I made something blue. My last tutorial, very quickly, um, I had made my little bags, and um, this, was an, this was a pattern that I had sort of messed up. I, I can't find, I keep losing my patterns. But I wanted to explain something. If you go back and look at this tulip bag pattern, the middle piece, I explained it to a couple people who asked, this middle piece here of your pattern is going to be the bottom of your bag. So as you can see, this pattern here is a, a fairly narrow bottom. This bag here is a fairly wide piece. This is one piece of material. Somebody, oh, please excuse me, I forgot who, met, who um, suggested it. What a fabulous suggestion. Again, if you go to my, if you go to my pattern, if you go to my pattern making, I cut this out, then I cut out the, the um, stabilizer, then I cut out the backing or, yeah, whatever, of the lining. You could, you could make a rectangular fabric quilt it, and then just cut out your pattern, and then make your bag. And again, people have, again suggested you can get into this bit here by sewing that bit first, and then sewing that seam. So anyway, if you're not, if you, if what I'm speaking is all messed up, jiggery pokery, that, that was my previous tutorial on my little tulip bag that I made. This was the larger one, and people were asking what size is the bottom, and that's, that is however big you want to make that bit there. So anyway, that is my, this is going to be my tutorial to follow. Um, this is my lovely blue runner that I've made. Again, I made it with a striped fabric here, um, which I think is so delightful, making it a very reversible little, little quilt. And then um, you could just add them together and make a quilt, having added some corner triangles and some sashing. This is a very simple braided, braided little runner. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial to follow. Um, and I just beg you to keep, keep safe and keep well. Um, and our, our son Luke had done a shop for us um, produce-wise. Our daughter Malia is going to the shops right now for us. Um, to go out and get some toiletries that we need, uh, hopefully, if they're to be had. Um, so yeah, so I, I, just, I just beg you to stay indoors, um, keep healthy, wash your hands. And, you know, this is going to be for another month here in America. It's, it's, uh, it's the beginning of April now. It's a month. 
It's a month out of our lives. Okay, it'll be two months out of our lives. It will impact others much greater, I understand that, than some. But hopefully it will, it will get back on an even keel. And um, we hope and pray that happens for you. So we're thinking about you, sending our regards. Um, I hope you enjoy this diversion, just a small little runner using a bit of a jelly roll. All right, folks, thank you so much again um, for all your well wishes to my family. Appreciate it. All right, see you later. Bye. So my husband came in. This is Ian, if you haven't met him. And what do you think of my table runner? Well, first of all, is my hair combed? <laughs> Your hair, your hair is so long. Is so long. Oh, haircut. I know, and it'll be another month. Well, <gasps> my, my mobile tonsorial artist does yeah. not exist. No, that's a barber. It's English for barber. Tonsorial artist. Yes. Yeah, anyway, this is gorgeous. <laughs> it's then blue. I'm, then I'm a fan of everything you do, and I love blue. You love blue. I do love blue. Right? I don't love blue. Oh, well, look at the uh, contrasting colours. Yeah, the blue and the yellow. Yeah. I made a blue. I made a blue bag, my tulip this bag. Is gorgeous. Is, it, is this a table runner? Yes, that's or a, a table shawl. runner. Oh, it could be a shawl. Go on, put it on. <laughs> yeah, prayer shawl or something. Yeah, it could be. If I was Hasid. Oh, look something. at that. Look at that. Wow. Oh yeah, it could be. <laughs> look at that. And I, I just wanted to tell the folks that I pulled, I pulled from my blue because I don't make blue things. But what? Yeah, I know. Look what you're gonna look in. Yeah, you're looking at my blue, my blue fabric. I have more blue fabric in this sewing room <laughs> because I never use it. But notice it's at arm's length. Or no, at, I know. It's, at, it's or at, at the top of the ladder. It's at the top of the ladder. And I went up my ladder and pulled blue because people are like, you have to make a blue. You have to make blue things. So I made blue. I like that blue, actually. I think no, that's really gorgeous. pretty. Yeah, I think that's this really pretty. It's truly gorgeous. It's sunshine blue. Yeah, and I thought it's springtime and everyone's depressed and miserable with this horrible quarantine. And I thought, I'm going to oh, make... it matches my shirt. I'm gonna, oh, look at that. <laughs> It does. But not, not my teeth. It does. <laughs> now your teeth are a bit yellow. Oh no! Oh no! Shut up! <laughs> I washed them, I cleaned them, I, I scrubbed know. them. I know you do. No. <laughs> so anyway, that's my blue. That's my blue runner, folks. I hope you are proud of me. My Ian's proud of me. He likes blue. I don't love it. Yeah, but I'm your biggest fan. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Give Thank me a hug. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
and four. So I think it's four of each. I, I believe it's four of each. Or that one just has three. One, two. Oh no, they all have four. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess I, I guess probably I would have. Yeah, no, it didn't say that. I have ten. I have four strips of each print in this jelly roll. I think that's pretty. Now, from for my center little square here, I am using this pretty um, border print, which I have, which has the pink. Actually, I might choose, I might choose, no, I think I'm going to do the yellow because I think the yellow is very beautiful. I've, I've, I didn't realize that on the other side of that stripe, it had the pink roses. Yeah, but on this side has the yellow. I quite like the yellow, although I don't like the yellow, but I, I'm using it. <laughs> and then because I can make a blue and yellow quilt, come on. And then this will be my accent pieces, which um, you will have seen, which I will be making. For also for this um, project also, I'm using a nine and a half inch square ruler, which will just make it easy for me just for one runner. I just have to cut. I'll figure it out and I'll show you how I'm going to cut my nine and a half inch square that we're going to build our braids off of. So easy, I can use a nine and a half inch square. If you're just using a, a plain piece of fabric, by all means, just cut a nine and a half inch square. But I find if you have the ruler, it's awesome. I'm going to, um, I'm going to center my ruler somehow on my fabric and um, show you how I'm going to cut that. So I'm ready to cut my center square, which actually when you look at the, the, uh, the, the um, pattern it will almost be on a, a, uh, like a diamond. So I was looking at my ruler here and I was looking at the pattern of all my fabric. Here's just the pink stuff. And I centered, I was doing it like I would the square. I was centering my nine and a half inch square on this stripe. Um, and I put this in the middle. I would, I put my, um, my uh, five inch or four and whatever it is in the middle of this of the of my stripe here but when I was doing it with the yellow but I realized that there's one two three stripes up here and only one stripe and a bit of a bit of ground down here so I don't I don't quite love that I don't quite love that because it might look a little bit skewed so what I thought is I'll put my ruler on the diagonal in the middle of this stripe. Now I'm only messing about with this fabric because it is this, it is a definite stripe, but this is what I came up with. So my braid will be built on this these two sides. And my stripe here, which I sort of fussy cut that way, this is on the bias, so I will starch that and handle it very carefully because I cut this on the bias. But I quite like that because there's a stripe going each way. So if you're going to be fussy cutting your center block, which is really the block that's going to pop and be accented by all of your other, all of your other um, stripes there, you want that to pop. And I like it on this I like it on the uh, on point, as it were. So that's my center nine and a half inch block, which is going to be treated like that. So you must keep that in mind because, say, if you have an animal, uh, um, you're going to fussy cut an animal print, and you put, and here's your animal, here's your little teddy bear and you cut it like that well then all of a sudden you must realize that you're not going to be looking at your runner that way the runner is going to be looking at it that way your teddy bear will be sideways so if you're going to be fussy cutting your fabric just take an extra moment and think about how you're going to be looking at your French braid quilt now I'm going to start I'm going to show you what I'm going to do how I'm going to cut my other accent fabric and my jelly roll strips This runner is going to end up about 50 inches long. Um, and for this, for, for, this, uh, for this 50 inch long table runner, um, I've chosen seven different valued strips of my jelly roll. And as I was just saying to you, there are four of the strips of each pattern in my jelly roll, I mean, there, um, there, excuse me, there are 
10 in this jelly roll for each of the fabrics. So technically, I could make this jelly roll, I could make this, um, this uh, table runner 10 strips, just as they come off pretty much the value, the graduating uh, colorways, that long, and then I could make putting it together, which I will address in the beginning, I could make four of these runners with one jelly roll, putting them together to make a longer, a bigger quilt, but I will, with stashing in between. But I will address that in depth in the beginning of my tutorial. This is just now for making one table runner, which could easily be turned into one larger quilt. So I have laid out to my uh, to my satisfaction the colorways. I had I chose seven of them. I had ten, if you remember, and I've laid it out really nice and neatly on my my board here. And I'm just going to put my ruler up here this way. And oops, get my get my handy dandy <laughs> uh, get my handy dandy rotary cutter. I'm going to cut the ends off there. And as you know, I'm going to go in, um, let me just see here. I'm going to use my fist cars ruler and I'm going, there's two, let me just see if this is in the, is in the frame. Yes, yes, I'm going to use my fist cars ruler. As you know, I love my fist cars ruler. Everything is lovely and even. I've neatened up this edge here. These are lovely and even. And all I'm going to do, let me just move this, is I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut 10 inch strips. So I'm going to take my second ruler and I'm going to find my 10, which is right there. And then as you know, what I do is I go up the top. There's my 10 inch. Oops, I shifted that. There's my 10 inch. There's my 10 inch. There's my 10 inch. Now my um, Fiskars ruler, the blade, the blade is right underneath. The blade is right on that metal there, underneath. So again, I'm going to measure it 10 inches, 10 inches. I'm going to hold this down. This is a, a nice 24 inch long ruler here, or 26 inch. I'm just going to it down that way and there I have two each and I'm going to do the exact same thing lifting up my ruler finding my 10 inches again one uh, one jelly roll could eat yield four of these table runners this size there's my 10 inches Oops, that one shifted a bit. My 10 inches. There we go. Hold that there. Everything is nice and straight on my, my Martelli cutting mat here. And there are my, there are my, my uh, second set. And I'm actually going to put these in two sets, the graduating, uh, the, the, keeping them in the exact, in the exact order here, just like that. Because there's going to be one on the top of my quilt, on the top of my quilt square, as you will see. I'm going to graduate from the, the darkest down to the lightest. And, um, then I'll be cutting my, I'll cut my accent fabric now. So I've, I'm going to cut my accent square fabrics, or my little accent squares. This is what we need to cut for this table runner, which measures approximately 14, 14 inches by 50, 52 inches, something like that. You're going to need your one, your nine and a half inch square. If it's fussy cut on point, you're going to be cutting four, four each 
of seven different fabrics graduating in color, uh, colorway or um, value or different colors if you wish. I'm doing darker to light, dark on the outside, light in the middle. You're going to be cutting seven inch fabrics, four, four of them, two and a half inches by ten inches. You're going to be putting these into two piles, exact piles. Then for your accent fabric, you're going to be cutting 14 two and a half inch squares. So I'm using my yellow as my accent fabric. So I've cut 14 two and a half inch squares. Now we'll get to sewing them. So at my machine, I have taken what I'm calling pile number one and pile number two, which has my two each of my jelly rolls, seven different fabric strips and my accent fabric. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my accent two and a half inch square and I'm going to be sewing this on either end of my um, my strips here, quarter inch seam. I'm just going to pull from my pile, my top. Now you'll see that these this jelly roll in particular had um, pinked edges and it was ve it's very generous. It's very generous. I'm not worried about that. I just do it I just put on, I know I cut these exactly two and a half inches, so I'm sort of just putting them on the inside. And then when I go to um, iron them, I'll press them to the dark side. Quarter inch seam right along on all my fabrics here. So I'll just continue doing that. Of course, you're putting the pretty side of the fabric of the little square to the pretty side of your strip. Keeping them in order. I'll cut the chains apart and again, keeping them in order in, and putting them back in my pile one. So, I'll just finish this up. So, I bought my ten, my nine and a half inch square over, but this is a, this is ten inch strip, ten, ten inch strips on a nine and a half inch square. I'll show you what we're going to do with it at in a minute. I have taken, I've sewn my pile one, I've, I've sewn my accent strips on and pressed over to the, the um, strip. And um, I've taken my pile two and turned it over. The reason I've turned it over is we're working, I'm working with the lightest strips to this to my center square here my lighter strips graduating out to the dark out to the dark now we've cut these ten and a half inches and this is a nine um, a ten inches excuse me let me just put this over here and this is a nine inch square I mean nine, <laughs> we've cut these ten inches this is a nine and a half inch square you're just going to split the difference you're just going to go up a quarter of an inch there and you're going to come back down a quarter of an inch you can just eyeball that and again I have pinked edges here I just go wherever wherever I, my machine wants to go. Right there, that's fine. Quarter of an inch. Split the difference between the 10 inch strip and the nine and a half inch block. I'm putting that one lighter strip, my first strip on the right hand side, I'm turning it over, grabbing my next strip. Again, splitting the difference here from my nine and a half inch block and my 10, in, 10 inch, my nine and a half inch strip and my 10 inch block. And right off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finger press that uh, where it wants to go, which it wants to go that way. That's fine. That way there. Now from my pile here, my pile one, I'm going to take my lightest color with my accent strip and I'm going to line up. I'm going to nest. If you want to go over and press that, you can, but I'm going to nest this seam here, which is going this way. I'm going to nest that with that seam there. And as you can see, it's a little bit big, but that's okay. Matches perfectly up there. I'm going to start the quarter an oops. I'm going to start the quarter of an inch on the top there. Nesting that seam. Quarter of an inch. Going right off. Right off there. I'm going to turn this around 
and I'm going to take my other strip from my pile. I'm going to do the opposite corner. I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going, here's my accent piece there, as you can see. You see this? You see how it's working? My accent piece is going up here. And again, I've, this is this quarter of an inch. Don't worry about that. We sort of need that at the end, and you'll, I'll show you that there. So I'm going to put my needle down, nest these seams here, nest that up really nice. That seams, this seam is going up, the seam is coming back towards me. Scratch it together and do a quarter of an inch. And right off into that, the next one there. Now, by all means, if you want to go over and, and iron this, you by all means you can, which I think I'm going to do. But you see, this is this is why we cut the nine and a half inch square because we're going to be we didn't want to cut that point off. Eh, if you cut the point off, it's okay. I'm I'm choosing to go over and iron this right now, or press it, or whatever you do. I'm going to press these seams over to there, and then I'll show you how we gradually just build on our braids. So this is what we end up with for our first row. Now this might be, it's very simple to, to uh, make a French braid, but th and this is the simplest one as I've explained. I've gone over and I've pressed this. This might be a little bit confusing to some people um, if you get instructions because we are going to be cutting off and making this straight, a rectangle. So all of these bits here are going to be cutting off. So our next bit, which I'm pulling, I'm pulling from my pile one, my next bit, my next latest, my, my next latest, we're going to be putting on this, uh, if you're looking at your braid this way, you're going to take your next bit and you're going to be putting it up here. And you're thinking, well, it's not, it doesn't even match that way. We're going to match it up at the top here with, the, with my accent piece. We're going to match that and it's just going to be sort of hanging out on this end there. Don't worry about that. Make sure that the top is matched. If you want to pin it, by all means, I'm going to go back down here, quarter of an inch. This is our second round. This is from pile two. And again, you're thinking, well, it's, it's sort of hanging out into the middle of nowhere. Don't worry about that. Finger press that up like that, okay? Now with it in front of you, again, that way, you're going to take your next piece from your pile two, and you're going to go opposite. You're going to go opposite, which is over here. So again, you're going to find your accent piece. You're going to go up to the top of your accent piece, and you're stitching it at the end of that bit there. Quarter of an inch. It's a little bit funky. And as you can see, it's just straight stitches. It's not hard. It's just the placement of your fabrics. You could get confused because we're, we're ending up with a rectangle, but you were doing it all sorts of weird ways. Again, just sort of finger press this out like that. And keep it in front of you at all times so you, your, your brain keeps good. So now I'm taking from my pile one over here. Taking from, oh, that was pile two, yeah. Taking from my pile one. And again, visually, just figure out, ah, there we go. There we go. I see my, I see my, I see my table runner or my quilt starting to come together with my diamonds, my accent piece. So what you're going to do, having finger press that, you're just going to, again, nest this seam, pretty sides together to that seam. If you want to put a pin in there, you're going to nest them. So you, we make that, we make that um, intersection, that, that bit really nice. And again, my pink edges, I'm not bothered. That's in the seam allowance. It's fine. People get upset about pink edges. I don't. Uh, let me just see. Get that nest seam as, as good as possible. Oh, my, I'm, all, I'm all thumbs. <laughs> like that. Squeeze it together. Hold it together. Quarter inch seam. And then again, this just sort of gets stitched into oblivion. <laughs> it just sort of ends at nowhere, but that's okay. 
and right off. It's a little bit funny. It's a little bit, not hard, as you can see, not hard at all. But there, finger press that, and then you turn it around, turn it like this, taking from pile one, our next accented piece, and we're, oh, wait a second. Oh, wait a second. Did I do that wrong? <laughs> I, I keep thinking, oh, no, 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 no. Or did I do it wrong? Oh, yes, I did it wrong. Oh, yeah, I did it wrong. Oh, no, I didn't. That's fine. See, I get confused. So that's that. Oh, no, I did that wrong. Look. Oh, I did. I completely did that wrong. This piece goes over there. Oh, my word. Do you, you see what I did? I screwed up. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to edit that out. I messed up. And I'm not going to edit that out. I'm going to pick this apart. Because this is how... You get messed up. I completely messed that up. Do you see that? Do you see that? I'm 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 having to put this this piece over here. That's right. Oh, look at that. So I'm putting this piece over here. So then when I go to sew that, it has a place to go. Do you see that? I sewed this piece wrong. So again, it's a little bit confusing. So Keep visually, keep doing it visually as you go along with your accent pieces. So I'm not going to edit that out. I messed up. So I'm going to take this bit. That's it. That's it. I'm going to take this bit there. I just ripped that. <laughs> it's fine. Well, I think I got this right. Just set, do that. That's it. Because it's opposite, opposite, and then... It's sort of opposite sides, opposite sides, and then you joggle it up. <laughs> How is that for instructions? So now, there we go. There we go. Now my fourth bit is there. You see that? So I, now, I'm going to, I'll, I'll sew it on, uh, I'll sew it on that side. That's fine. I'm going to nest this seam. Wow, look at that. I'm going to nest that seam there, hold it together. Hold that. Come down to this end. You might. Oops. And then, I, and then my thread's my thread's gone. <laughs> so, so you see that. So you see what I did there. I bet you were. I bet you were like yelling at me. You were like, no, don't put it on that side. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. 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 So now I got it right. So this seam. I'll put a pin there. I'll put a pin there on that nested seam. And I'll just smooth that along and then I'll start here and go along. so you see how I messed that up so it's not hard but you it's just a little bit tricky to keep everything these four pieces your four braids in in the order that they're supposed to be going so so as you can see now there we go so there, now we go. Your accent pieces are going to be keeping you on the straight and narrow, <laughs> not me. <laughs> so now, let me try this again. Oh, geez, let me get it, see if I can get it right. So I started there. So I'm going to pull from pile two. And I, do I go here? See, see what I mean? Oh, I'm such a great teacher, right? No, I don't go there. I go over here. Where do I go? Yeah, I go over here. So if it's in front of me like that, I go there. Or no, I go here. That's it. I go there. And then I do that. Ah, so maybe, yes, okay, so maybe you want to visually, because I'm, I'm all like messed up, visually you want to figure this out, I'll go, I should go over and iron that, I'm getting all, I'm getting all nervous, <laughs> push that up that way, that seam, so do you understand, row by row by row, you just have to keep in track, just have to keep in, um, in order, I should say. So now I, I have that one there. 
So it's opposite. So this one, this one goes over. That goes there. That's good, right? That's good like that. So then this one, that's good like that. Actually, maybe we should just do, I got it. Maybe we should, maybe you should do, yes. Maybe we should do one side at a time or one, one um, place at a time. Is that right? Yeah. Now what I'm going to do, oops, I just dropped this one. I'm going to finish up one end, I should say. I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish up one end. And then I'll do the I'll I'll do I'll do each end. I won't do side by side. Okay? So I'll I'll address this in the beginning because it, I did, I got confused. I'll be doing one side instead of going back and forth and back and forth. That way I can keep a better visual. Okay, so there's that one. See how it works up? I mean, it works up very quickly. Got my three there. Look, it's lovely. Go over to iron this. Now, turn it around. Now, I have this bit, which goes like that, and then that bit goes like that. There we go. There we go. So, I, I'm not telling you right side, left side, left side, right side, da, da, da. I would, I want you... If you're if you're not real smart like me and make, prone to make mistakes like that, visually I think that's the way you want to approach this French braid. Your accent pieces are your sort of um, your uh, sort of uh, visual point. So now what I'm going to do, it may be it may be very easy for for some people who I, I, I you know me and I don't know my lefts and rights so. I have to do more visual. It's going that way. Um, so I can't say I'll do the left side, do the right side. I'm going visually on this one. That's it. And as what do I say? I always get there in the end. <laughs> so again, visually, come back on myself. I mean, my, my, my uh, thing is growing beautifully. And there we go. So I'm going to stitch that. I will go and iron this, though. We'll go and iron it because it's sort of not, not nice. I'll nest that seam. That goes that way. That goes that way. And then I'll take this over to my ironing board. Because the, the accent points, the accent bits, are um, you want them nice and crisp. Like a nice crisp diamond. That went slightly wider than a quarter inch. That's fine. So that folks, is how we attach our braids. And again, let me see. There you go. So it's really, look at that. In that short period of time of me waffling and making mistakes, it's coming on. It's coming on. Your accent points are your, are your test to keep everything nice and, and straight. So I'm going to go over and iron this, and I'm going to continue adding my strips visually visually i'm going to add my strips and i'm going to i've learned i'm going to do it two i'm going to pull two strips and do it that way and i will address this in the beginning that's what i'm going to do i'm going to do the top and then i'll turn it around and do the bottom that's it for me mm -hmm. How's it going, darling? I've really tried to look after you with a light wire today. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. I really messed this up, and then I figured out that it was because I was doing left and right, and I couldn't do left and right. I had to do it in front of me visually. That, that I, like that's it's visual. I, I was trying to do like put this on the left hand side and do that on the right hand side, 
and I, could, and I was, I messed up and I, I um, had to rip it all out. But this way, this way, I'm doing it visually, and it's just going real quick. Oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. Turn it over. This is a fast. See, you have to do that up to there. I was doing it like. Do it the right, do it to the right side and come back and uh. So we'll watch some lark rise. So do you just want to give me 10 minutes so we, we've got it right? Okay. You know, you know that Brit box thing? Yeah. Well, that's going to cost us $6.99 a month. Yeah. If we keep with that. Right. Oops. I know how to get rid of it now. Oh, okay. Um, that was on my credit card? Amazon. Oh, okay. Because we were looking at it on Amazon. It was it would add to your Amazon. Okay. But I've got it back on Hulu. Oh yeah. We want it on Hulu. Did were we watching adverts with it on Hulu? I, I don't know. Do you want to just check it now? Yeah, okay, just one minute. Two minutes. Okay, you're not rushing me, you're not rushing me. Where's this day gone? I can't believe it. It's quarter past four. Put the kettle on, would you please? Thank you, Just came unthreaded. Oh, that was weird. Why did that happen? blue. <laughs> I don't like blue. Oh, but people want to see blue. I have so much blue. Make some blue, something blue. Oh, I made blue. Oh, whatever. But I quite like it, actually. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Once it, once it gets going, look at that. I breed mad. And my last one. long it's big oh it's been recording <laughs> oh folks there you go uh, yeah <laughs> I'll leave it yeah it's funny here is my table runner that I've just taken off my sewing machine um, and I've just ironed this really well and um, and this is how it's going to come out so now what I'm going to do I'm going to turn this around this way and what we have to do is we have to cut off these bits here. Remember all of these straggly bits. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the point here, this quarter, about a little more than a quarter of an inch from my 
my um, center block here. And then you could mark it if you wanted to. Um, but what I'm going to do, because I have a long ruler, um, I'm going to make sure this is completely square and the points are exactly on my cutting mat where they need to be because um, the exact, the exact uh, where they're supposed to be here because I'm going to be cutting away a quarter of an inch. I'm going to be cutting away this excess here and I find if I do it like right, uh, right to the end here with my ruler keeping it nice and straight that I can eyeball the quarter of an inch, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch and have a nice straight line right down here to cut off these side bits. So I'm going to do that now. I've lined this right up here. Everything is all lined up really nice. And I'm going to cut this, cut these triangles off and make it a little bit more looking <laughs> like a the table runner it should be. I'm only going to do it to the half there. Just cut it off like that. And now here is my lovely table runner and I'm going to come up and I'm going to use this straight line here as a guide also to do the to, 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 to go up here if that makes any sense. I'm going to keep this line straight along my cutting mat finding my just a little bit more than a quarter of an inch keeping everything really lovely and straight till I get to the top there. Whoops it shifted. It's come down here to this point now I'm going to put my ruler nice and straight, nice and straight, so everything is lovely and straight. And again, I'm going to start here and go right up to the top there. And I know that I'm nice and straight, like that, and then cut this side off here. And there is my one side of my table runner. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Now it's looking more like a table runner, right? So bring this down here. I'm lining these up on my... And that way you can line this up over here on this, on this side here. Lining that up, finding my little bit more than a quarter of an inch. Right there. Making sure my ruler's nice and straight. Making sure everything is lovely and straight. Now, being careful not to stretch that right there, that side over there. And I'm going to just cut this. Whoops, I'll just shift it just slightly up so I can cut that. Take your time here because, it, you know, if you cut too much, you're messed up, but... So I'll do that half. Oh, look, look, look. And then I bring it back down here. Again, keeping this line over here on my mat. Knowing that that's lovely and straight. Mark, keeping it level right here. Up to the top. and cutting off the excess. And there, folks, is my pretty table runner. The top, the top of my pretty table runner. There it is. And again, you have to be careful because I cut all of these off. This is all on the bias right here. That's all on the bias. So actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over and I'm going to just do a small, in dressmaking it's called a stay stitch. I'm just going to do a small, not a basting stitch, a small regular sized stitch just to secure this edge. Because when we're working with it, we want this to lay lovely and flat. And as you can see, it almost has a tendency to pop up right now, um, just because of the the um, uh, stitch, the um, making of it, the creating of it. So just to secure that down, I'm going to do a lovely, not stretching at all, a lovely stitch right about an eighth of an inch away, just making sure that this 
this stays, I guess that's what it's called, a stay stitch. This stays nice and flat. And then I'll be back and show you what I'm going to do next. So here is my lovely uh, table runner, which I have stay stitched along there. It's a good idea to do this stitching because we have cut off right in the middle of a seam. And these, these seams here could uh, the stitches could come unraveled so I quite like that I didn't go up here I didn't do that because that's cut that's not on the bias or anything that's fine um, I've just ironed it I've stay stitched on each side and as you can see my table runner is running really nice and flat and now all I have to do is back it which I'll show you the backing in a moment and sandwich it together with my batting and then quilt it but first I wanted to address um, a, a, and again I'll have mentioned it in the beginning if you wanted to make a French braid quilt, how would you go about taking this very simple table runner, which I've done in literally just half an hour or so, and make it into a quilt? Well, the very, very basic basics that I'm going to show you is, um, again, if you, I've just pulled fabric from my jelly roll here. I've, I've pulled two fabrics from my jelly roll, two and a half inch strips. Now, I want to show you that on each, either side, let me just put this away here, on either side, you could start building your quilt. If you made, say, four of these, four of the same ones, if that's the look you wanted, you could just add a sashing, just a very, very simple sashing, and build your quilt from there. But you say, well, what is this up here? What I'm, I'll just show you here, what I've done is I've just pulled from, an, from my other fabric um, a hunk of, a hunk of blue, a hunk of blue uh, polka dot, right? So I know this isn't, this isn't the proper way because you, if you wanted to get a ruler and make this square here by, or, or this uh, triangle, this um, corner triangle here to, to, to um, finish this off to a square, right? You want a square before you put your sashing on but what i what i do sometimes when i'm messing about just to see what it will look like i'll do this i'll sort of i'll sort of just eyeball it like this well you get it that that edge that's that, that edge will just turn in it's raw edge, but you get that so there's my as it were there's my corner there and then when I put my sashing on, I can do that on both ends. Just turn this under. You get the idea what I'm doing. There's a there's a ruler method. There's a um, there's a, a a certain ruler that you can get that you can do that is mathematical to get this to get these two try to get corner triangles. But just doing that, okay, and then you just cut it bigger and just set it in, careful of this bias seam here, to cut these bits, all right? So you could do that on either end, cutting your corner triangles. By all means, if you're going to do, let me just grab a, see if this would work somehow, to do it more, more professional, you would measure here, measure here, and do your, cut a piece there. Um, maybe maybe cutting it maybe cutting it this way so that this is on the on the straight of grain here but that's how that's how messing about that's how you would get a a section to square off your quilt so you would do that on both ends and if you if if you added if you you just saw me I use seven one two three four five six seven I use seven of my uh, jelly roll patterns and then and then I would uh, and then I would add a, a little bit up here um, but it this has made let me see this has made my seven from point so that's 36 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 it's a made about a 54 inch long table runner Okay, and again, one jelly roll could make four of these with the addition of your center square. That's not including your corner triangles. Okay, that's not including, if you did four of these, 
that's not including what would it be um, 16 corner triangles okay and then obviously some some sashing um, maybe a, from another jelly roll or what however you wanted to do it again this is a very basic basic uh, French uh, uh, French braid quilt a braid quilt um, or a braid table runner this is a very basic one you could do you could now put a smaller sashing here and then a larger one to give it more impact. I will have shown you in the beginning just the two French braid quilts that I did putting these together. I find the one that I really, really liked was using a panel. A lot of people go, what do, how, what do I do with a panel? Put four French braids around a panel for as it was runners around a panel with some filler pieces in the corner, you know, jiggery pokering it, fill, fill, you know, in the corner bits, and you have a beautiful, very quick quilt. Um, but right now, what I have chosen for my, my backing is I've pulled from this fabric here, my, my um, center square fabric. This is going to be my backing for this quilt. As you, can, oops, as you can see, it has the center, I've put the center, the teacups. Now I'm going to, when I sandwich this together, I've, made, I've just cut this out, I'm going to be putting this, my edge here, on, I'm going to be cutting through the pink roses, and then I'm going to be cutting through the yellow roses on the back, but the center of my quilt back, will have my lovely tea, my lovely teacups and flowers. So it really truly is with this directional fussy cutting print, this truly is going to be an absolute reversible, reversible uh, quilt, a uh, little table runner, I should say. Um, so I'm going to now, I've, I've fussy cut that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, get my backing, I mean my batting cut, and I'm going to sit, pin base this, and I'm going to, all I'm going to do when I actually quilt it, and I won't, I won't bore you with that, I'm going to literally start from, from one end here, when I sandwich, and coming up, and then back down, coming up, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch, I think there's enough pattern and enough pretty going on that I don't have to do an all over meandering and it's easy again a very simple a simple um, beginners thing to make you just stitch right in that seam there and then come back down right in there and then come back down and because of this pattern that's that's quilted every about two inches right so then I'll come back on my pattern and if you have just a plain block just come back and I'll stitch I'll just stitch um, you know probably just like one, two, three, four, maybe five straight stitches in here and then come back and do that. And then my, my and then I will bind it and I'll, I'll come back to you when I'm ready to bind my little
I have just finished quilting my lovely little table runner here. Um, and as I, I was showing you, I just did it in the ditch all the way along and I secured it as I do around the edge of my, uh, any, any quilt that I make. Now what I do is before I attach my binding, I cut this away. I cut the uh, batting and the backing away. And I actually use, I could probably use a rotary cutter on this. I actually use scissors and I cut it about quarter of an inch. And if you've seen any of my binding tutorials, you will know that I like my binding to go right up, right up to the um, edge. I mean, my quilt sandwich to go right into the, the uh, binding itself. So I don't have a, like a floppy binding on any of my quilts. So I'm going to just cut this away, having secured the edges. Again, if you make this, you could do any kind of quilting stitch that you desire. You could do a meandering stitch all over it. This would be a very good project to practice free motion quilting because it doesn't take a lot of fabric and, and um, it's, an actual, it's an actual little quilt at the end of the day. So there is my quilted lovely um, little table runner here. And there's... Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, so pretty. Yeah, I got that right in the middle. Oh, well, not quite. Eh, it's fine. Um, I like that there. So very pretty. Very springy. That's why I, I chose this in these, in these bleak, dark days. I thought we need a bit of happy. <laughs> so here's my runner. Now, what I've done is I've, ch I've ch pulled two, two fabrics to audition for my binding. And I've, I've gravitated toward the yellow here. Um, to pick up the yellow. This is a yellow and white polka dot. This is a small yellow and white dot here, and although it reads solid. It's a yellow, yellow with little tiny white polka dots. This fabric is a yellow with a little bit of a larger dot. And again, only like quarter of an inch is going to show, but your binding is so very special um, framing your quilt. I, I like that. that. That brings, again, a touch of, it lightens the whole quilt up. I chose this dark blue. Let me see what I think of that. And, and uh, the binding is so important. And as you can see, this dark blue, that, that brings the, that, that seriouses it up. That's what I always say. Do I want a serious quilt or a, or a, a funner, happier, lighter quilt? I, I like I think this is very safe, but I'm not very safe. Um, uh, most people perhaps would choose the darker. I'm going to choose this lovely bright yellow for my binding. Um, so now what I'm going to do, and I said before, I'm not going to bore you. I don't, uh, uh, yeah, I have enough of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my binding strips out of this. And again, I cut my strips two and a quarter inches my binding strips two and a quarter and I do have to I'm not gonna I'm not gonna because this is not a binding tutorial um, I'm going to have to uh, what I do is I I sew on the back of my quilt and I turn it to the front I'm gonna have to sort of like just jiggery pokery this bit here I make a little tuck and bring it over and then stitch it to the front as you know I don't like mitered corners but I'm not about to round the corners of my runner because that defeats the purpose of this lovely point there so I'll just mess about with these here I'll tell you that in the beginning um yeah so then I'm going to show you my finished quilt my little finished I'm at my ironing uh, little table here, and as you can see, I am completely finished my lovely little table runner. And um, I didn't do a, a tutorial on how, to, I, uh, how I was binding this, but I'm pretty okay with that. I just sort of scrunched a, a tuck in there and a tuck up here and a tuck there, and it looks pretty good. Uh, it looks pretty good. As any of you who know, who follow me, you know that I don't like mitered corners, but I just sort of made a tuck. I don't know. Looks fine. Looks great. But what I am going to do is I'm going to iron my, my table runner. You know, I, I'm going to iron this quite flat, actually. Um, as you know, I always lightly press my finished quilts. People are like, what? You know, why would you iron a quilt? Um, I think you've messed about with the fabric, the fibers. They get sort of all yucky. And as you know, that cotton fibers shrink with heat. 
um, even if you've pre-washed your fabric, they'll sort of just shrink up nicely, beautifully. And I think for a table runner, especially, especially obviously a table runner, you want it to lay as flat as possible. So I have used a 100% um, a cotton batting in this. I think as you saw, I've used a cotton batting, um, which is rather thin anyway. I did not use my um, warm and plush uh, batting. I used... Um, um, another um, less expensive batting that I had gotten. It was rather thin, and I think for a, for a, I forget which batting it was, but for a table runner, you want that. You want just a more, a thinner, a thinner batting. Obviously, you wouldn't use a puffy, puffy polyester bat, um, because that would, it would create puff. <laughs> I don't know, and your, 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 uh, your food plates are going to, you know, falter on it when it's put on the table. So you want your table runner, obviously, to be as flat as possible. But you can tell that this is a quilted runner. Oh, look at that. Especially on my back. See how my back is? You can see the quilting, the diagonal quilting stitches, and then the ones just right down the middle. And as I, as I was selecting, oops, there's some threads I have to cut. As I was selecting my my fabric, remember I said my my backing is going to be um, one row of pink flowers and one row of yellow flowers. That was my stripe. I love working with stripes. You do need to get more yardage when you, if you see a beautiful stripe, because you're obviously running down the length of the fabric as opposed to the width um, to get that beautiful stripe. But to me, um, I, I just think it's, I think it's worth it to be able to get, and in this case, a completely, completely reversible table runner. Completely. Two absolute different looks. So there is my lovely table runner. I do hope you love it, folks. Um, and I hope you will make it. I hope I explained enough how to just add some sashing and some corner triangles up here um, to make it square or to make it a rectangle. And then you can just just start, make it longer. Um, you, you don't, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not uh, married to just 10. You could do it 12. You could do it however many braids. And again, by the time I figured it out, it was really quite simple, as you can see on my tutorial. This did not take me long at all. Um, so I, I hope you love it. I hope you love it, folks. All right, stay safe. I'm going to go wash my hands. Yeah, another day indoors. But it's okay. It's all going to come out in the wash. All right. See you later, guys. Bye.